50 plus category, the seven time national champion Kevin Phillips. Come on up to the line, look at him in the sporty new kit. New to colors on the iron fly. There he is, your 50 plus defending champion. And then in the 55 category, none other than Evo specialist superstar, Mr. Bart Clifford. He's your 55 plus category reigning, defending, Tournament Marietta champion on the new Cervello. Rest of the gentlemen, come on up. Feel up. Hey, welcome back to A Faster Me. This is going to be another video brought to you by Building Block Construction. And this is going to be the Tour de Marietta Stage 1. So this is the crit in the first stage here. And as you can see, there's some, or as you heard at the beginning, there's some big hitters in the race. Um, this is the 50 plus, I'm sorry, this is the 50 and the 55 plus 1, 2, 3 combined. There's always big hitters in this field. Um, you know, it's masters racing, but a lot of these guys have been racing for a long time, very strong. As you can see, multiple national championships, state championships, and just, you know, a variety of experience and talent in the field. And, you know, no matter what the age says, this group is very fast. Um, yeah, it's just a fast, fast experienced group of riders. So yeah, let's start off with the course. This is not your normal cookie cutter course here. This is a, it's a pretty punchy L-shaped course. As you can see the infield here, it's not too technical. A lot of people like to call it technical just cause in California, we're used to these, Southern California, we're used to these, you know, cookie cutter four corner crits. So it's not really technical, but um, you know, when at speed, some of these corners come pretty fast. Uh, the roads are wide, so we can take varying line. There's a little bit of a dip or like a storm drain kind of deal, like, you know, um, right in the corner. So it gives a little bit of a bump, a little unsettling here and there. And then coming into this side here after the long back stretch, it goes from asphalt to kind of like a cobblestone or a brick, and then back to a narrowing asphalt here. Same thing on the next corner and then another very long straightaway. So um, sets up for an exciting finish with this very long sprint. I believe it's over 400 meters. I think somebody said it's 450 or 430, something like that. But it, either way it goes, it's a very long um, home stretch here. So we end up racing like at 8.50 in the morning, I think it was very cold it says 57 but when i got here i think it was 36 or something when i got there that morning um it warmed up to the like 40s when we started um so i don't know if it's really 57 not sure but it was very cold this morning so anyway i came into this race you know really out of shape um uh, having some health issues just you know if you've Follow my channel for any amount of time, you know I have some heart issues. I've kind of went the natural route just because some of the uh, medical options I had, they weren't too sure about them and didn't think that they'd work. And some of them would even cause uh, further complications for me. So I kind of went the natural route and been off meds since like uh, January of 2020. However, anytime I have like something else going on in my life, it ends up throwing my heart off. And I don't mean something like, you know, stress or anything like that, but typically like if you're sick or injured, um, COVID last year set my heart out for like six months or so, had me, you know, back in the AFib on and off. And this year it's been that Long Beach crash. So since the Long Beach crash, I've been kind of in and out of the AFib, um, you know, every so often. And so haven't been able to train that much and just haven't had like any type of, uh, confidence with my health because I just don't know how my heart's going to react. So I came into this one 50 50 and really didn't know if I'd be able to finish the race or not, or how I, you know, if I'd even be able to start the race, to be honest with you. So, anyway, that's Pat right there, kind of coming up the inside there, which was good because um, I had just told uh, rider 718 that I was on his inside um, just because I'm late. And to be honest with you, 
uh, anytime you have to say something to a writer, typically you're out of position, you know, and so if I'm telling someone I'm on their inside, I'm typically out of position. I'm probably a little bit too far behind them and I'm not in their peripheral vision. Um, and that's really the only reason, you know, you really need to say anything um, is typically when you're a little bit out of position or if someone's moving over on you. But if you're in good position, they probably would see you anyway. So. So Pat goes here off the front and uh, I'm sorry, on a little move up to the front and in about a lap or so, I think he's going to go off the front and swoop up a bunch of uh, kind of Omnium points here. Yeah, so again, this um, coming in not feeling so great, this 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 race was really tough for me. <laughs> you know, it was really tough for a lot of people, but it was really tough for me. I just felt, didn't never felt good, didn't feel warm, didn't really get the legs warm, didn't feel like I had any legs. Um, you know, I think my heart co cooperated for the most part. It was feeling a little bit weak, but it didn't, you know, it stayed in rhythm and you know, I didn't really have too many like issues there, probably just a little bit lack of confidence, not knowing how I was gonna feel. But overall, my legs were not feeling good and I kind of struggled this entire race here. My, uh, my judgment, not judgment, I don't know if judgment's the right word, but um, I'm kind of not in a good flow here. Like even just taking some of the corners and stuff like that, I'm just like a little bit off, probably just from lack of racing and lack of riding. But um, yeah, I'm a little bit off here to, to start off and I don't think my lines are exactly the greatest. They're not like horrible, not bad. They're not, I'm not like all over the place or anything like that, but um, they're just uh, not where I want to be, so. And part of that is where I'm at position-wise, being this far back, there's a lot of brake checking. We should be flowing through these corners a lot faster. And as you can see, sometimes there's a lot of slowing down back here. So yeah, really, I'm just not in a good spot. I should be up a good 20 spots here. I started to go around uh, rider 143 here, but you know he accelerated a little bit and I'd rather have him do that effort instead of me. We're putting in some pretty high watts, but I'd rather be in a nice draft than to go around. I thought there was gonna be a gap opening there. Could have been behind the Evoke rider going up the left side there and use a little bit of his momentum to make up some spots. But like I said, I was struggling. 174 heart rate, it's not too hard for me. That's about where I'm at threshold when I'm in shape. I think right now, being out of shape, it's a little bit higher than threshold for me. It's kind of like at the top of my threshold, maybe tapping into some VO2 when I get into the mid 170s. Um, when I'm in shape, I'm usually pretty good until I get into the mid 80s, mid 180s, sorry. Um, but yeah, 174 in the with the fitness that I have right now is probably a little bit, just slightly high for me. Not, it's manageable but slightly high. So here, this section, um, this actually is a pretty good section for me here. Not right now, I'm just not in good position, but later in the race, I think I used the outside a couple times to make up a couple spots there. And when you're out of shape, like the way I look at it is I kind of break the course down to a couple spots, like a couple sections. And I really just try to identify, hey, where's my efforts? Where do I recover? And, you know, it's kind of like you race it in that fashion to a degree when I'm out of shape because you're just trying to hang on. So basically it's like, hey, these are all my recovery spots. This is where I have to be recovered for to make the hard efforts. And for the, for the most part, the hard effort on this course is going to be the front straight most of the time just because it's slightly uphill. Sometimes it's against the wind. I think today it's in a little bit of a tailwind right here. And you're going to accelerate out of this turn a good five to 700 watts on pretty much every lap. And most of your effort is going to come on this front straight here. So we're about three laps in, four laps in now. And this is kind of what happens here. There's always a storm at the beginning of almost every race, especially every crit. Then you kind of weather that storm and everyone kind of slows down. You know, we we're going 28, 29 a couple laps ago. Now we're down to 23 on this front stretch. 
but I think the promoter's throwing a <laughs> throwing a preem lap as soon as it slows down, so it's gonna get hot again. I was kind of surprised though, just being coming in with the fitness and the health issues I've been dealing with. I was kind of surprised one that I stayed in it, and two, I think it was over 20 riders did not finish this race, and that was a little surprising to me because it was hard. Um, you know, talking to some of the guys after the race, there's a couple guys that they're just, you know, said they kind of popped a little bit. And, um, you know, I don't know where they're at, like, as far as, like, up front or in the back or whatever the case may be. But for this entire race, I mean, I only averaged 210 watts average and only 250 normalized. So, yeah, it was hard for me because I'm out of shape, but I, I was just surprised that so many people didn't finish the race with me averaging those type of numbers i just thought it was just me being out of shape and it was you know hard for me but it looks like it was just a hard race you know it was a hard race overall and this course sets up for that um because the corners are not really tight they're not really that narrow or anything but there's a lot of stop and go and a lot of surging so you know if you're not in, if you're not prepared to you know, to do, I don't know, 60 sprints in the, in the next hour or whatever, or at least 60, you know, hard accelerations, then yeah, it can be, it can really take a toll on you. So at the moment when I'm back here and it slows down a little bit, I'm taking a little bit of a drifting line, which is something I kind of preach against, you know, I mainly preach against it to, um, like the lower fields, you know, like kind of to the four or five field and the women's three, four or five field. Um, a lot of the people that follow me or whatever are in those fields. And I preach against taking that drifting line. It's not exactly the same in this field. I mean, it's it's completely different because it's a different field. It's a lot safer for me to drift to the inside sometimes when the when there's people on my brakes in front of me. But um, just still the same thing applies overall. It's not it's kind of hard to say that but overall it's not really where you want to be especially if you're like in the lower categories you don't want to drift to the inside of the turn it ends up being like a kind of kind of like a dive bomb tendency the difference is the way we do it here is we're going the same direction we're not at a t-bone angle we're going the same direction as the rest of the field and we only do it on spots where we know the field's not going to come across um, to the left and come across and pinch your wheel it's only where we know that apex is going to be like a very split second that you're going to be to the inside of the turn and everybody's going to exit kind of wide. And that's what allows you to be able to take that inside, really tight inside line or a drifting line. Like even coming as tight as I am here, you see how we're going to exit to the right side. So it's 100% safe. If I thought the Peloton was going to hug that really tight to the left, then that becomes a dangerous line to take really inside tight like that especially if you're late if you're early doesn't matter if you're out front doesn't matter but if you're coming in a little bit late then it becomes like more of a dive bomb tendency you can see here how fast this gets because this is directly into a headwind it's just in the morning it wasn't that stiff of a wind you know at the end of our race i think it started getting a little windy and you can feel it a little bit but going 29 down this stretch is like, yeah, it's slightly downhill, but like I said, into a headwind. So you're still going pretty good if you're in the high 20s, low 30s on that stretch. So as you can see, coming out of that turn, this can get pretty taxing. And like I said, like if you're not prepared for it or if it's just you get caught with cold legs or whatever, yeah, that can definitely catch you out. And this is... I don't know, we're only uh, not even halfway into the race already, and we've probably done, I don't know, I've probably done over 600 watts at least 10 times already. There's a big dip here, right there. It's not really a big deal. Um, we come at it pretty straight anyway, since we're taking that outside wide approach to the turn, taking a very late apex. So we come at it pretty straight and it's not really that disrupting.
but yeah, I love the little characteristics of this course. Um, yeah, I, I don't do too well on it, to be honest with you. Uh, Tour de Marietta altogether, you know, I don't, I don't do too well here. This, this course beats me up a lot. <laughs> Both these courses beat me up a lot, but um, it is enjoyable. It's fun to race. And as much as I was suffering in this race, it was still pretty fun. You can see we're pretty stretched out here. The speed's not the highest, but anytime it's stretched out like this, you know, the efforts are high. Yeah, now we're up over 30. So yeah, it's definitely stretched out. Couldn't hear the bell, so I don't know if this is a preem lap, but uh, we have preem points and then you have products, preem products. So anytime there's an Omnium, um, or stage races, usually they give you some preem points as well. We definitely still should, can be carrying a lot more speed through these turns here. Yeah, it's critical when you come out of that corner, um, one, to hold your momentum, and two, not to draft like someone that's going backwards. Um, you can see the even just this, the I think it was a CFT rider that was kind of coasting a little bit there. He's probably going to come back by me in a minute. If, yeah, there he goes. Um, but yeah, just the little bit of a slower speed going through that corner, open that gap there. And that just takes a lot of energy to close those gaps. So you really want to hit that turn, carrying a lot of momentum, and then you don't have to spike as much. Um, you know, you don't have to spike power as much coming on the exit of that. And it's really the same for all of these turns. As much, you know, pedal through them as much as you can. And just keep your spike, it is, it'll lower your spike a little bit. But everything feels like a spike to me right here. <laughs> like I said, I was suffering, everything just felt like a spike. Yeah, it was so cold too. As you can see, the temperature is probably probably more realistic now when it said 57 or whatever i don't think that was correct um but yeah this is probably more realistic to what the temperature was when we were racing and i know one time coming up the front stretch like you know before my legs warmed up my hamstrings i don't even know when my legs warmed up to be honest with you i just know at one point my hamstrings were so locked up you know i just couldn't get like i couldn't get them to loosen up couldn't get any power and you know i didn't think i was going to make it through So yeah, I'm pretty sure um, we might have brought Pat back by now. I say we just the Peloton, but Pat was off the front for, I don't know, three laps, I think, and he racked up uh, some pretty good preem points. It looks like it's pretty close to all together again now. If you look up front, it's, it's stretched out and someone has a very small lead up there, but not more than just a couple seconds. So yeah, they're definitely on the gas again. You can see a little gap opening up here. I hate it that I have to be the one to close it because I just don't have it in me right now, but um, it's okay. I could have put in like a harder dig and really closed it. I can see I'm like making up a little bit on it here, but I didn't really want to put in a hard effort and I was pretty confident that they, you know, they're not out of reach or whatever. I just honestly didn't want to, I didn't want to burn up and close it. And for sure, it gives me a chance to not hit any brakes here and just go through, carry a little bit higher speed through this, you know, turn one. And then you're back attached again. You know, it still surprises me too. Um, I probably pointed out more on the, on tomorrow's video or stage two's video. Um, but it surprises me still just the number of racers that don't have a good understanding about Apex's uh, race lines, the natural race line when they see someone like us now with the Peloton over to the left, it's natural that they're gonna cut across with the late Apex here, but people will shoot up the inside and it was baffling to me. They shoot up the inside because there's all that room in there. And then they think that the Peloton's at fault for coming across their wheel. 
and the, I don't know, that just blows my mind that people can be racing for a decent amount of time, have a lot of experience, sometimes really strong, and think that they got their wheel chopped. When that's not getting your wheel chopped, that's you chopping your own wheel. If there's people wide to the left of you carrying speed like this, like here, if anyone shoots up that left side, you're not getting your wheel chopped, you're chopping your own wheel. The natural line for that wide approach there is gonna be a late apex. If and it's and I'm talking about late apex, but it's funny because when you have conversations with people, most people don't understand apexes. They don't understand like exactly what an apex is. They think they have a general idea of it, but when you have the conversation with them, most of them do not. And it's just funny to me how people can be racing bikes for a long time or just be as strong as they are and not have those basic concepts down. I think the pace has definitely settled a little here. At one point it ends up getting like painfully slow through the turns. We might be at that point now. <laughs> uh, and I know there's some tactics going on at front. I think there was another small group trying to break away, maybe a four or five riders. So I know there was some interference being ran and things like that. But yeah, it it's, gets really painful, you know, especially when you're expecting to carry speed. And I think at one point we were down to close to maybe under 20 miles per hour through some of these turns. And trust me, I know as well, hey, if I don't like it, I can go to the front and create the, create, create the pace. <laughs> That's not realistic for me, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not a knock, I'm not complaining, but it just was surprising to me that some of these turns, especially down here at the end of the back straight, there was times where we were damn near parked you know, damn near doing a track stand. <laughs> uh, and, and that's just crazy because it should, this corner should probably be always over 25 miles per hour. As you can see, we're at 31 right now. Yep, 31 to 24 through the corner. Didn't even hit 600 coming out of that corner. So definitely carried a little momentum there. Um, yeah. Being out of shape or being unhealthy sucks. And I'm both right now. But I, honestly, I think I, I think my fitness still is carrying a little bit. I did, like I said in one of the videos earlier this year, I did do a lot of work in the off season. So I think a lot of that has paid off, but just unfortunate that I'm kind of backwards now. I'm just losing fitness every week. I think that was something there too. I'm not going to rewind it or anything, but over there on the right side, there was a, not a, not, not like anything big deal, not like a near miss or anything, but I think it's uh, good to point out that if we're making a left-hand turn and you're passing on the outside, you got to be aware that that rider to your inside has his head looking left because it's a left-hand turn. So you don't want to crowd too much. And, you know, I, I seen this in one of the crit practices, you know, a couple weeks ago where, you know, people got injured uh, where someone's passing on the inside and it's a right-hand turn and the guy ends up clipping the guy's left elbow. Well, he has no clue that you're there because his head is to the right. He's looking right through the turn. And, yeah, that's completely on you to – you know, make sure you give that person some room. So yeah, we got to sometimes make better decisions when we're trying to squeeze into a tight spot and understand that some people say, well, he should know that you're there. No, he shouldn't. His head is turned to the left and you're trying to squeeze by on the right hand side. And he doesn't expect any contact coming from that direction. Looks like I'm going backwards a little bit here. 
once again. Yeah, I think I got to give myself a little bit of credit, though, because, yeah, I mean, looking at just the efforts that we were putting in and some of the pace of this race, some of the some of the accelerations on the race. I mean, yeah, I did better than I expected just with the uh, I did. Yeah, I just did better than I expected, I guess. And I didn't do anything special. That's how low my expectations were. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't do anything special. <laughs> I was happy just to still be out there riding. You can tell I'm losing a little bit of punch though coming out of these corners. We're definitely using all of the road. This crew probably has a, another mile per hour or two still in it, um, you know, just circulating the course, but we're definitely using up all the road here. I think this is a miss for me. I could have taken this opportunity to move up a little bit. But maybe not, we are doing 29. But yeah, if CF, CFT is moving up on the left side there, I definitely could have moved up a couple spots. And then we're down to 23. Like I said, we were starting to park it in the corners later in this race. This is one of the things that just really taxes your legs when that speed dips in the turns and you're down to 22, 23 miles per hour and then have to accelerate up to 28 coming out of those corners. That's what really taxes your legs. I think we only got a few laps left now, maybe five laps left. You see Bart going up the left side. You know, anytime I see Bart going up the left side from the back, or I, I shouldn't say the left side, just moving up from the back. Obviously, we're going to be down in laps now. Yep, six to go. Six laps to go, and of course he knows he needs to, you know, start preparing to uh, get in position. Yeah, and please forgive me if... Uh, <laughs> I'm just talking out the side of my neck. It's late. I'm just trying to get some of these videos out. I'm so far behind. I got the entire Victorville stage race that um, I haven't put out yet. But I just did, I'm just putting this one out as soon as I can because I try to balance the women's videos with the men's races. And since the women have been racing more than me this year, um, yeah, it's time for a men's video to you know hit the channel. So. I'll try to get this one out, but definitely tired. It's late night. Once again, I should have taken the opportunity to move up here. You see everyone's coasting. And yeah, when it gets slow, that's when you move. When it's fast, just hold your position. It slows down, take that opportunity to move up. And you see my heart rate's pretty low right here. 168 is very low for me. That's kind of like, you know, like a zone three R rate for me tempo. Yep, each corner, each time we come around, each lap we do, we're getting slower in that corner. Yeah, I'm guessing there's still the break off the front though, because it looks like the, you know, the front's being controlled a little bit here. As bad as I'm feeling leg-wise and just fitness-wise, I, 
I did try a little bit, <laughs> you know, try to make up some spots there. But as you can see, when the drag race starts again, I'm kind of fading. Yeah, I think Marietta still is one of my, yeah, I, I think it's one of my favorite races. Just Tour de Marietta overall is one of my favorite races. One day I will come prepared and in shape and, and I'm just, yeah, I'm going to get a good result. Two days in a row. <laughs> Can't tell if that's Pat there again. Could be. Yeah, I don't know. Pat might have been the only go fast rider in this race. So yeah, it probably was Pat again. Took some time to uh, recover, you know, after being off the front. Now moving back up, uh, you know, back up to the front after you, you know, back here chilling for a little bit. Once the sun comes out, the weather actually was pretty good. It was it turned out to be beautiful. Both days really turned out to be beautiful race days, beautiful weather. Unfortunately, I had to race in the morning both times. So each time I got to the course, it was in the high 30s, mid to high 30s. Took a little time to warm up. kind of re weird weekend too this race here um from what i understand from what i know this race was pretty safe i don't think there was any crashes or anything in it but over the weekend just yeah over the two days especially on day two there was a ton of crashes ton of flats you can tell it's getting a little faster now or at least not, maybe if it's about the same speed, but it's definitely getting a little bit more urgent. You can just see in people's body language, the urgency's up a little bit. Try to glance over and see how many more laps we have to do. Probably about three laps. We might be going into three laps to go. Definitely could have taken a chance to move up a couple spots here again. Like I said, anytime people are coasting, you can put in an extra five seconds of pedaling or so to make up a couple spots. I'm not sure I'm far, far enough to the right to see the lap board. Yeah, I should have moved to the left and followed uh, those riders moving up on the left side. Don's bike. And I, don't, I didn't see who the first rider was, but yeah, definitely could have used their momentum a little bit to move up a couple spots. Yep, three to go. Three laps to go. Yeah, we'll say the inside of that turn right there, turn one, because of the ADA ramp, 
makes it look a little bit weird. And I think sometimes people think they have more room than they do because the curb is there, but the ADA ramp comes down and meets the road. So it makes it look like you have more room to the inside, but there's actually a little lip there on the curb. So not this turn, but the next turn also, um, turn three here, it has the same deal where it has like an ADA ramp to get onto the sidewalk. Makes it look like there's a little bit more room there and then there's a curb there as well. I should be going around the outside here and just carrying a little bit more speed, trying to make up a spot. Because there's actually a lot of room on the on the left side there once you come around that turn. I mean, I've used it a couple times in this race, but I should have been, you know, using it more to my advantage. If there is an advantage. Thought the CFT guys left me hanging somewhere. They might be right here, yeah, and open up that big gap. I don't know if it's here. No, it must not have been here. Maybe it was earlier or on a later lap. But I thought one of the times they left me hanging with the big gap there, and I was trying to struggle to close it down. All right, so we got two to go. You know, when I saw three laps to go to, I knew I was okay. Like, you know, I'm not going to... I mean, unless I chose to, I wouldn't fall out with three laps to go, I didn't think. It's just, you know, when you see that lap board, obviously it motivates you when you get down like under five laps. But honestly, I'm so far back here, I'm just trying to finish the race. You know, at the beginning of the year, Marietta was one of my, the races I wanted to do well at, you know, one of my target races. But just the way the year has been going, it turns out that it was just training for me. <laughs> just two days of training. It's like a practice crit. Definitely playing some games up front now. I'm always a little hesitant here. I think I just don't like shooting up that left side here. I just don't like being caught too tight on the inside when we're down to the last couple laps. So I think I was moving, I'm being a little tentative. And I'm far back right now, but honestly, with three laps to go, there was enough time to move up. Just wasn't assertive. I'm feeling pretty good here. And I don't mean good like overall physically. I was struggling all day, but I mean, I'm, I'm out there. I'm putting in the effort. So really I should have, you know, taken the chance to move up a little bit. And I don't mean taking a chance, but I should have just, you know, identified the spots where I can move up and I should have moved up. Here I move up a little bit, but you know, I'm, I'm here on the inside and I'm not really being assertive. I know the Peloton's gonna move to the right a little bit here and get this angle. So I am pretty far up the front though here. I mean, not far up, but probably pretty, for the most part as far as I've been all race. Struggling coming out of the corner. Yeah, so I went from about 18th position to 25th or something, you know, in between turns one and two. Again, I should shoot around this outside here and just keep, keep on the gas here, carry some speed around the outside to make up some spots. I do make up a couple here. 
actually not too far back, almost had a senior moment there and didn't adjust to the elevate rider moving over to the left, which obviously I should have known because the Peloton moved left. So, And then here, I think I just kind of waved the white flag about here, like completely waved the white flag because it was looking like I had an opportunity to move up and kind of get in the mix, but yeah wasn't really in me wasn't in the cards and I kind of waved the white flag there and just backed off and just kind of gonna cruise in here a little bit for the finish yeah there goes the long sprint to the line but I never sprint or anything I'm just seated here trying to just keep my momentum I don't want to come in last exactly but definitely not like putting in an overall effort as you can see I only had 780 total watts for the entire day so just trying to keep my momentum going and not let too many people pass me but anyway thanks for watching you know it's late i'm tired sorry for the you know just hanging out at the back video but it is what it is and that's where i'm at right now so i'll try to get uh day two out pretty soon in some of the victorville races so again thanks for watching i'll see you next time